If you're just starting with DocuSign in 2023 and you want to get up to speed quickly, then this video is for you because I'm going to cover and explain the five steps you must follow to send your documents for signature to your recipients and also show you how they can access and sign them. So let's just imagine that I'm the HR rep from company X and I want my new employees like Bob to sign this payroll information form. As you can see, I want to collect Bob's personal details and I also want him to provide me with his bank information. I want to receive a copy of the document once they've been completed by Bob and I also want the payroll team to access the document and click on approve so that I know that they've actually set up the employee in the payroll system. Now let's see how to do all of this inside of DocuSign. So once you're in DocuSign, just click on the start uh, now button from the home page. And I'm now acting as the HR manager because I'm the sender of the document. If you don't see the button start now, reach out to your admin. It just means you don't have the right permission profile. Now once you click on start now, what happens in the back end is DocuSign is creating an envelope. DocuSign envelope is the same thing as a physical envelope in the sense that you can put documents inside of them and you can send them to someone for them to read or sign, but they are much more powerful. We can place as many documents inside of them. For now, I'm just going to upload my direct deposit authorization form that I showed you just before. And so that's our first step completed, uploading our documents. Step two is to tell DocuSign where these documents needs to go. So we are going to expand the add recipient section and here I'm going to add my candidate's name and email. That's Bob. Okay, so I've got Bob's name and email as my first recipient. But remember, Bob is not the only recipient in this workflow. I want to receive a copy of the documents. So remember, I'm the sender. So as the sender, I don't need to add myself in the recipient. However, we also want payroll to receive the documents so that they can click on approve so that we know they've set up Bob in the uh, payroll system. So I'm going to click on add new recipient and I'm going to enter the name of the payroll person. Let's just say it's payroll at solisign.com. Once you've added your recipients, you, there's a couple more things we need to take care of before we move to the next workflow, and that's assigning a recipient action. By default, the recipient action is needs to sign, and that's correct, but we could assign a, sys, a receive only recipient action, which means the recipient will simply get a copy of the document, but they won't need to do anything on the document itself. So for Bob, that's correct because Bob needs to sign. And for payroll, that's also correct because because while we don't then need them to sign, we still need to take an action on the document, which is to click on an approve button, which I'm going to show you how to add later. So I'm just gonna leave the needs to sign action for them as well. One last thing is to specify a signing order. So what's the signing order? The signing order will tell DocuSign at what time your documents should route from one person to the next. If we don't set a signing order, all our recipients are going to receive the documents in the same at the same time, which is not what we want because payroll should only receive the completed version of the document which means they need to sign after Bob and since Bob should be the first person signing Bob should be signing first and then payroll should be in position two so we're going to click on set signing order and automatically DocuSign adds the first recipient in position one and the second in position two. But if we had a third recipient, we could also change the default signing option from three to two, which means that the first recipient would sign first and then the set the other two recipients would receive the document at the exact same time. So we don't need a third recipient in this demo. So we're just gonna move to the next step, which is to add our field. It's also worth to mention that you can send your envelopes by SMS if you wanted to, but I'm not going to worry about this for the purpose of this video you can find my video on how to send your envelopes by text in the youtube channel now i can also add an email subject and email message if i want to otherwise the default docusign subject is fine and i can specify the frequency of the reminders by uh, using this drop down menu here because once you send your document once docusign will make sure that your recipients sign your documents and so they will send them reminders every other day you just decide of the frequency yourself here you have also more advanced options at the top right but we don't really need to worry about this for the purpose of this video, we're just going to click on next and we're going to take care of step number three, which is to add our fields to our documents. And I've just realized that I completely forgot to introduce myself. My name is Sofian Saudi and I'm a next DocuSign employee and the founder of Solusan Consulting. To automate your workflow, you need three things, templates, databases, and integrations. And that's exactly what we've been building for our clients since 2019. We've been helping thousands of companies just like yours automate paperwork and manual tasks using DocuSign primarily with, but with many other tools as well. So if you're tired of fighting documents and boring repetitive tasks alone, you can book a strategy session with one of our consultants using the link 
link just down below. And we've also put together a free guide to help you understand and remember how to use the most important features of DocuSign. I'm going to show you in this video. You can download it using the link down below. It's called the DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet. But for now, let's go back to step three, which is to add our fields to our documents. So what are fields? Fields tell your signers what information they need to provide on the document. And they also make sure that your signers provide you with that information. You can see the list of the fields to the left of the panel on the screen here. Each of them will require your signers to provide information in a slightly different way. To add your fields to the document, you simply need to drag and drop them on your document in the spot where you want the information to show on the document. So we're still acting as the sender of the document. The sender of the document does that. So I'm just going to drag and drop the fields that I think are relevant for this document. So for the name, I'm using a name field instead of a text field. The reason for this is because the full name field will automatically pull the name that you've entered you as the sender in the recipient workflow just right here since we've already got the candidate's name i mean the recipient's name we don't need to ask them for their name again and so that's just saving your recipient having to do it manually it's just going to merge whatever you've entered in there they can still change it don't worry and then we have the street address line one so for this i'm going to use a text field which I'm going to resize because you can see it's overlapping on the following box. And I can also expand this. For the city, I could drag and drop another text box, but I can just simply duplicate the box that I've created above by selecting the box that I want to duplicate and doing a command or control, depending if you don't work on PC, and D for the word duplicate. And I can just reposition my field. For the state, I'm going to use a drop down field and I'm going to position it here. The reason you want to use a drop down is that it's so much faster for someone to just pull the list of states and just pick one instead of having to write the name of the state. And also, they could spell the name of the state wrong. So, what we can do here is to add options in our drop down menu. And so, we could say California, we can say Florida, we could say Wyoming, whatever state that you want. And then I'm going to save. But because I'm likely to use this field in my my other documents in the future I'm going to save it as a custom field and so I'm going to click here and call this list of US states and the great thing is that now this is going to be available for me in my custom field section and I can just drag it and drop it on my document the next time I'm sending a document through DocuSign now for my zip I'm going to use a text field and this text field I'm going to add a validation what's a validation the validation make sure that your signers are going to provide you the information that you need in the format that you need. So if I enter zip validation here, if somebody wants to enter a letter or four digits instead of five, which is the normal pattern for a zip code, then DocuSign will tell them that there is something wrong in the field and that they need to correct it before they can complete the document. So that's going to help you receive your documents completed correctly. It's also worth mentioning that all these fields appear as required, meaning that Bob needs to provide information on these fields to move forward. But if I untick this box, my fields are going to become optional, which means that Bob will have the option to fill them out or not. And I, I want to get all that information. So I'm just going to click to leave required field. Now for my, the name of the bank, I'm going to add my text field and I'm going to do the same thing for the account number and for the account number i'm going to add a numbers validation and for my routing number i'm going to add a validation as well which is numbers and for the type of account i'm going to use a radio button the difference between radio button and checkboxes is that a checkbox will allow your recipients to select multiple choices but here I only want Bob to tell me whether it's a checking or savings account. Now, the last thing is for me to add Bob's signature field as well as the date sign. The date sign will automatically pre-fill. It won't let Bob choose a different date and it, Bob won't need to type anything in. It's an automated field as well. The last thing is for me to give an approve button to our payroll team so that I know that they've actually looked at it and they've set up the candidate in the payroll system. So I'm going to navigate here to the top left and change the recipient to whom I'm adding the fields for and I'm going to choose payroll you can see now the fields are changing to a different color and that tells me who the fields are assigned to I want to give them an approve button and I want to place the approve button at the top right here and actually I can even change the text and say set up in payroll that's it my envelope is now ready to be sent so i'm just going to click on send i'm now viewing the email as bob and so we'll click on review document to complete the document as bob if bob tries to enter an incorrect zip 
it's going to tell them that it's, it's not working, it's invalid. That's how the validation works. And by the way, you can see the date is already here and Bob's name was already here as well. I'm going to sign as Bob and then the next person who's going to receive the document is going to be payroll. So now let's take a look at the email notification that DocuSign sent to payroll. Hi payroll, please complete the DocuSign deposit authorization form. So let's just open that envelope. Now let's just pretend that as payroll, we've done our thing, we've received the document, we've set the candidate up inside of payroll. We're just going to click on set up in payroll just to confirm that we've actually done our job. And now that this is done, all the signers as well as the sender of the document have received a completed version of the documents. And so you can actually decide whether you want to have the PDF attached to the completion email or whether you want a link. I personally prefer a link. And so here is the completed document that all the signers and the sender can access. But wait a minute before you go, because what follows is very important for you to grasp. The next thing that you want to learn is how to automate all the things we've been going through in this video because it was pretty time consuming having to add all our fields. To automate the process, you want to do two things. First, you want to create your envelope as a template because it will help you create reusable envelopes in no time. It will really help you speed up the process. The template will contain your documents, your recipient placeholders, as well as your fields. If you want to learn how templates work, you can watch this video. But for now, let me show you how to convert this envelope in a template. But if you want to work very efficiently, because like, why wouldn't you? You'll want to integrate your template once you've built it with your database. What is this going to do for you? Well, this is going to allow you to send the documents from within what Whatever app you're used to use, whether it's a CRM, your HR software, your Google Sheets, your Airtable, in one click and not in a million clicks like we just did in this video. Here is what I'm talking about. This is just a demo database that I quickly built for this video. You can see here I've got a list of candidates. Those candidates need to sign an offer letter and then they need to sign their deposit authorization form. So this is Peter Owen, for example. He's a candidate and I want to send him this deposit authorization form, the same one that I sent to Bob. I can just click on the record of Peter and then click on send and select onboarding docs. And so that's going to send the envelope to Peter automatically and pre-fill all the information that you can see here in the envelope. Let's take a look at the envelope that Peter has received now. Here is Peter's envelope. Let's open it. And there you go. You can see that Peter's information have already been pre-filled in the envelope and it only took me one click. Instantly, Peter's envelope was sent and it's pre-filled with the information we've already got on him. And if I sign the envelope, the data entered by Paul will actually be extracted and added to his file in our database. Let me quickly fill it out. Before I sign it, I want to show you that we don't have Peter's bank details in the database. So if I go back here, as you can see, these are uh, completely blank and they're read only. I can't edit them here. So let me sign this and show you what happens next. I've just completed the signature process. I've just clicked on sign. And now let's take a look at what's going on in our database. If I go back in there. Peter has disappeared. He's no longer in the successful interviews tab because he must have moved to the onboarding. And yes, his status now says onboarded because our template in DocuSign is connected to our database and told the database, hey, the candidate is now onboarded. The amazing thing is that we've also got the PDF that's attached to Peter's record. So this is a complete document. And the data Peter entered for his bank details has also been extracted and it's now here here in the field, which means that if we give access to this view to our payroll team, they don't even need to look at the PDF. They just got all the information they need at the fingertips. This is what a fully integrated template can help you with. It helps you save a ton of time and increase your efficiency 10 times. You can easily track the status of each transaction because I've got a status indicator here to tell me who has completed the document and who has not. And all of this is automatically synchronized. Basically, DocuSign is not an application that you should ever have to log into. It should be just working in the back end for you and be integrated in all your backend systems. If you're interested in implementing integration for your business, I suggest that you watch one of my integration tutorials or you book a strategy session with one of our consultants if you don't have time to build it yourself. All the links of the things that I mentioned in the video, you can find them down below. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to create your own automation between DocuSign and your backend system using Zapier. I will see you then. Ciao.